You are listening to the Huskers Nutrition Podcast, presented by Midwest Dairy and your local farm families. Here is your host, Jessica Cooty. Hi, everybody, and welcome back into another season of the Huskers Nutrition Podcast. I'm Jessica Cooty, and this podcast series brought to you by our friends at Midwest Dairy once again. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be diving into all things performance nutrition for Husker student athletes. There's a lot more that goes into it than just fueling these student athletes. There's a lot of training, a lot of tools that are provided. And so we're going to dive into all of that with Lisa Kopecki, the director of performance nutrition and her staff today joining us is Jake Blattner, associate RDN. Got that right, right? Yeah. Lisa, let's start before we get into all the fun stuff, because you guys have a lot of cool stuff to, to talk with us about. But tell us about your staff, because we're going to be hearing from a lot of your staff members throughout these next few weeks. Yes, Jessica, we've got 10 registered dietitians on staff that work directly with all of our student athletes. So each team has a dedicated dietitian or more. For example, football currently has three. So all of us have specific sports that we're responsible for, and that includes education, making sure that they're fed, they understand their hydration needs, and body composition testing. How important is that to have someone that's dedicated for each sport and can maybe dive in? Because it's not all the same, right? Not everybody eats and fuels the same, right? No, nope, not everybody eats and fuels the same. We have endurance athletes that require um, different specific needs as our strength athletes do. And it's just really important to get to know them so that we can help them plate coach when they come through the training table, help them troubleshoot anything that may come up throughout the year. And Jake, you work with what sports? I'm with the men's basketball team with coach uh, Fred Hoiberg and then our track and field team with uh, Justin St. Clair. That's awesome. Well, yeah. That was a fun season last yeah, year. Yeah, that was an awesome season. How'd you get to Nebraska? Tell us your backstory. Um, I actually grew up a small town farm kid. So grew up in Rochester, Minnesota, bailing hay, milking cows, grew up on a dairy farm. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so dairy has a little special place in my heart. And then I knew, I knew I wanted to be a sports dietitian since I was like 15 years old. You know, like that was like the main goal. So went to a small private institution called Viterbo in La Crosse, Wisconsin. No one's ever heard of it. Um, senior year, I really wanted to be that sports dietitian. So I went off to Princeton University to a specialty rotation in sports nutrition and uh, Victoria Rosenfeld um, or Lambert actually was one of my mentors. And she really got me integrated into sports nutrition. and. After graduating, I was like, oh my goodness, there's only like five sports dietitians in the U.S. Like, how do I get a job? So I was doing research and development for like GNC, Vitamin Shop, and I got a phone call from Florida State. They said, hey, come on down. Spent three years at the Seminoles, and then uh, they paid for my graduate schooling. Got a phone call from uh, Dave Ellis and Lisa Kopecki up here, and shoot, what, five years later? Yep. Here we are. So. Oh, that's awesome. Well, this is a crazy time of year because you got a lot of new students that are filing on campus, a lot of freshmen that are probably learning how to eat properly for the very first time and fuel <laughs> themselves properly. You're laughing. What, what is that like when you get these new freshmen in and, and how you guys kind of get them acclimated? Well, a lot of people on the street ask me all the time, so what's different about performance nutrition? Don't people just eat and then <laughs> perform? Well, no, it's not that simple. Number one, not everybody comes from the same background. Not everybody has been exposed to what macronutrients are. Carbohydrates for fuel for the body, protein, which is our building blocks that helps us build and repair muscle, also helps keep our immune system strong. And then fat, fat is essential for many functions in the body. It cushions all of our organs, it boosts our immune system, also helps with absorption of some of our vitamins like A, D, E, and K. So we have to make sure that these kids coming in understand that all those components are really important when they are fueling their bodies. And for the first time, many of them are on their own as far as fueling their bodies go. Mom and dad aren't there to remind them it's time to eat, to make sure they had breakfast or money in their school account, and it's up to them to make it happen. Is it, this time of year we have student athletes kind of rolling through here and a lot of them are on campus either practicing or maybe doing two a days. There, there's a lot going on, especially for the fall sports. So how important is this time for, for the, these kind of groups that are trying to get set for August, September and, and the, that time of year? Yeah, we're building our building blocks right now. So like Lisa said, it's, you know, we're building that foundation of, hey, this is how we're going to get through the season. This is what a, a performance plate should look like for you. So right now is kind of that, that key building period or onboarding period for the student athletes. So. Um, Great example. This morning I was watching our volleyball team come in and half of our team are freshmen right now. Uh -huh. And it was just fun to watch them build their plate and then for me to make suggestions. How about you add a carb here? 
Can we get a good protein source right now? How about something high in uh, calcium, such as Greek yogurt? So sending them back in to try again to make sure they have all the components of their plate. I know you guys play a big role in, in recruiting these freshmen well, when they're in high school. How big is that too? When uh, it seems like a lot of them, that's important to them when they come in and they're going through these recruiting processes that they always mention the nutrition stop and, and how important that, that is for them developing as a student athlete. Absolutely, and moms and dads are concerned about their kids getting fed when they're off at college. <laughs> and I think we're one of the few institutions that's actually offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner to all of our student athletes. I've been to a few different institutions. I've, uh, you know, I've looked around within the NCAA. Nebraska sets the bar when it comes to it. Are freshmen overwhelmed when you first start talking to them? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot, yes. <laughs> Their eyes are really big, and they're just taking it all in. They don't even notice probably half of what we have to offer in the training table because there's so much. So we have to have constant visuals and reminders. These are things before practice. These are things that are helpful for recovery and just continuously training and reminding them, making sure they know how to make their own smoothie. They can make their own eggs and toast if they want, but there's a lot of teaching that goes on. Late night studying, intense practice, cramming for that big test? Take a moment to reset yourself with dairy. Dairy foods like milk and yogurt allow you to stay in the game with immunity boosting nutrients like vitamin A, vitamin D, zinc, and protein to keep you fueled without the crash. Trusted by athletes and supported by science. A message from Midwest Dairy and your local farm families. There's food, but then there's also the hydration part of it. Tell us about the importance of that and, and that education part of it. Yeah, I mean, everyone's looking for that secret little edge. And, you know, I, I had to think about that one time. I was giving a presentation. Um, everyone's like, well, what are, what are your top five secrets? I'm like, well, I mean, there's no crazy secrets. I mean, eat three meals a day, drink some water and <laughs> sleep, guys. Like it's, uh, it's sometimes nutrition is common sense, just not common practice. So, you know, when those athletes first come in, like how much water should you be drinking? You know, half your body weight in ounces. So say I'm a 200 pound athlete. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, we um, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, hey, I'm 200 pounds. I should be getting at least 100 ounces of water. This is around 32 ounces. So at least three of these bad boys a day. It's just a starting point for us. And then after you get done working out, we have, oh you know, yeah, it's just a regular bottle of Aquafina too. So a few different examples here. Um, 16 ounces, 20 ounces. So depending upon how many ounces of fluid you need a day, you can um, figure out or plug that into a little equation. So I know, hey, at least three bottles of water for myself. And then for if you jump on a scale before practice and then after practice, for every pound of water that I sweat out, we're looking at 16 to 24 ounces. So say I was 200 pounds before practice, jumped on a scale after practice, and now I'm 199. I just know I need hey, a bottle of Aquafina really quickly to rehydrate me, get me back to baseline. Are you constantly too like, hey, drink, you need a drink when you, <laughs> yes. when you go out to practice? Because I know you guys are embedded with the teams, you travel with them. And so when are you constantly making sure that, hey, you need to drink a little bit more, make sure you stay hydrated? Yeah, during games and stuff, I know like we've already calculated out. We have like fancy sweat patches and sweat rate testing and stuff. So I know, hey, how much someone's going to lose per minute on the court or out on the field sweating. So we have a quick calculation that I know like, Hey, CJ is a fire hydrant out there. Like he's just like, he sweats like no other, it's ridiculous. Um, so like we have to stay on top of him and make sure he's replacing that fluid that he just lost and to make sure he stays hydrated during a game. And it's, some of our student athletes are losing more sodium than some of their teammates. Our heavy sweaters, the kids that you see the salt residue on their face when practice is done. So we're keeping an eye on them as well to make sure they understand that they either need to heavily salt their food between practices or they're adding some electrolytes in. So after practice or games are done and they're coming back to get refueled, tell us about the kind of plate. You, you have a thing called a performance plate, yeah, right? Yeah, so I'm going to show you that. an example here. Um, this is our moderate training day. So this is a good visual to help student athletes understand what needs, what components need to be on their plate when they're fueling. So for an athlete that's doing moderate training, maybe up to three hours of training a day, there might be some sports specific training or some strength and conditioning but they're gonna to wanna to divide that plate into thirds. So a third of that plate is coming from carbohydrates. We want higher fiber carbohydrates for long-term sustained energy. And then we're gonna use fast carbohydrates around their training. So some examples of some fast carbohydrates might be fruit snacks, um, applesauce pouches, 
or potentially a bar that's made predominantly of carbohydrates. So that would be the performance piece around their training. And back to their performance plate at their meals, we're also looking for about a third of that plate coming from quality proteins. So whether that's a piece of salmon, chicken, steak, um, or eggs. And then we're also looking for that last third to come from fruits and vegetables. Okay, so I think I skipped over a part. Tell us about macros. Well, the macros, that's the protein, okay. carbohydrates, and fat. So all three of those are essential at every meal and need to be a part of every athlete's performance plate. And then how we divide that plate depends on the cycle of training that an athlete may be going through. So that's one of the very first things that you say, hey, this is what a plate, the things that combine or make up a, a good performance plate. Right, right. And before we can get them to put it on the plate, they need to understand what it's going right. to do for their body. So I always ask our male athletes when they come in, if they're looking to gain muscle and every one of them raises their hand. And so then my next question is, what do you suppose you need to eat more of? And they all say protein, which is not the correct answer because we typically don't have a hard time getting our male athletes to eat protein. <laughs> But what they actually need is more carbohydrates. They need more fuel because if they're under fueling, then that protein they do consume gets used for energy and not building and repairing. How much do you find too when they come in and, oh, well, I don't like fruits, I don't like vegetables, that you have to show them, hey, there's a lot of different options yep. that you can find? Yeah, we find that frequently actually. So some of our student athletes will be doing daily or weekly challenges, trying to get them to just try other fruits and vegetables. Or they'll come in and say, well, I only like steamed broccoli. Okay, well, broccoli isn't on the menu today, but we can teach you how to make your own broccoli in our life skills kitchen. Or could we hide spinach in a smoothie uh -huh. and you don't even know it's there if we put a lid on it and you can't see the green color. So, and then going back to the hydration part of it, it's not just water, right? There's, there's other things with, in terms of liquid that you need to be putting in your body and replacing with. Yes, definitely. So like one of my favorite go-tos, like just simple chocolate milk. Like that was something as a high school student that, you know, like I said, we grew up a dairy farmer and everyone's like, well, chocolate milk, chocolate milk. Well, why chocolate milk? I mean, you're getting some electrolytes in there, some sodium, some calcium, but you're also getting that protein for recovery after a workout. So actually chocolate milk's a great hydration solution and a, a protein solution too, so. And then uh, what else besides chocolate milk do you, do you like to hand? student athletes? Well, I mean, our sodium, um, I mean, like your Gatorades and stuff like that. And then also like just little pretzels, like uh -huh. little snacky things. Um, obviously Gatorade, you need to replace those electrolytes. So that's something we lost in our sweat, sodium, magnesium, stuff like that. So just some salty snacks to keep around uh, the dorm room, the backpacks. Um, when I was a high school student, keep them in my locker, just some little pretzels to make sure we're getting that sodium replaced. So when you are losing the salt, it's not just about drinking the salt, it's about eating the salt. Absolutely. Yeah. For a lot of athletes, especially our kids that come from Europe, they are not used to drinking electrolyte replacement drinks. So they're looking for alternative options. So can they salt their food a little more heavily to get what they need? And you might have dived into this a little bit earlier, but just so you're talking about all the different amounts and the ounces that you need to be putting in your body, but does that change with depending on the activities that you're doing as well? Yes, definitely. So, I mean, when it's hot, it's humid out, like we, we can't sweat as efficiently. So we're gonna need more liquid to uh, help cool us down. Colder liquids help us cool that body temperature down. We used to use like electrolyte popsicles or just freezy pops, like that was a half time. Yeah. Watermelon. Yeah, yeah. watermelon. <laughs> um, you know, just things to help cool that core body temperature down too. So um, watermelon's great, freezy pops, just cold water. And, and when you're so hot and sometimes you don't want to eat or you don't want to drink, how do you reinforce the, the need for that this time of year? So it's not uncommon when students come in from training and they're supposed to be eating a meal and they have no appetite because their body's still trying to recover from that training. So we will continue to use fluids, electrolyte slushies, cold salads, frozen grapes to try to cool that body temperature. We'll get them to consume some carbs right away and then hopefully within a couple hours, they're ready for a meal. So we may have to send a meal to go with them. Anything else to add to that? 
Oof, I think we covered a lot okay, of that. Well, you're shaking your head. I thought maybe you, you, you can tell it seems like you guys are on the same page. How important yeah. is that with your team? And we're going to hear a lot again uh, from a lot of them. Just it seems like they're all kind of bought into to the messaging that you're, you're kind that, of telling us. That's our main goal is to really standardize our messaging so that we can help all of our student athletes. I may not understand all the intricacies of one of Jake's basketball guys, but if he comes in and I can ask him, are you a weight gain guy or a weight loss guy? then we can help them out on the fly if Jake isn't present yeah. and vice versa. All right. Well, this is going to be fun over the next few weeks. I'm yeah. learning a lot. I'm sitting here trying to take notes and take it all in because I think it's important not just for athletes, but for everybody for a healthy day-to-day, yeah, -day, right? for the general public. All right. Well, Lisa Kopecki, Jake Blattner with Huskers Performance Nutrition. We've got much more coming up here on this series throughout this summer, so make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen to never miss an episode. And thanks again to our great friends at Midwest Dairy for making this series possible this summer.